So in this segment, we're going to be talking about Pretty Patel could face home, um, could face contempt of court charge. So I read this story and I was reading it and I was like, I don't know about this one, Chief. I, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I was in my head. I was thinking, I don't know, Chief. Um, uh, so I was reading. So getting to the story. So Home Home Secretary Pretty Patel could face a charge of contempt of court after failing to follow an order to house an Iranian sex offender. The High Court said it wants to know why Ms Patel had failed to comply with the mandatory injunction. It is exceptionally rare for judges to threaten ministers with contempt of court and can be punished with fines or jail. The Home Secretary and her officials have to until the 22nd of February to respond. The row um, with the court emerged in a judgment published on Tuesday about a failure to provide emergency housing to uh, Kajran Ashrad um, Fatula. Uh, Mohammed in the northwest of England, the Iranian national was jailed in 2016 uh, for tw uh, for 20 months for sexual offences involving a child. So this guy is a pedophile. And so, um, if, if the more we dig into the story, the more it will make sense. I, I hope. Um, so you know, left jail but not deported. So foreign national offenders jailed for 12 months typically face deportation from the UK. But Mohammed was bailed from immigration detention in 2018. I tried to Google what that meant. Um, I couldn't find anything on it. Um, the closest I found was this description. A grant of immigration bail to a person does not prevent the person's subsequent det detention. Um, and even if someone is granted bail, they can still be detained. I, I don't know. If someone in the comments understands this stuff, then you let me know. Um, it's just, yeah, one of those things. Um, last October, he asked the Home Office for basic emergency housing under a law for destitute people whose claim to stay in the UK have been rejected but who are not likely to be removed from the country in the near future. A week later, Home Office officials told him he would be found a bet, but uh, according to the High Court judgment, this did not happen. So it's important. I was trying to figure out how to how to discuss this article, and I struggled. I struggled a lot because this guy should be deported. He's dangerous. Um, he's dangerous, and you know he's committed acts involving a child. Um, you know, he should be deported. I don't understand why he wasn't deported, to be honest. Um, but under the rules, he should, you know, under the rules of, you know, those who are not deported and who are not given, um, you know, license to stay within the UK, um, the Home Office are breaking the rules here. And you can separate the, the man or the pedophile in this case from the law. And I know it's difficult because I'm struggling myself to try and do that. But the Home Office, you know, if they're not going to deport people, they have to offer them basic housing. The government can change those rules if they wish to. Um, they haven't. Um, and so this is the situation right now. If the government wanted to make it so he'd have to be in jail for more than 20 months, they can increase mandatory minimums. That's up to them. If they're annoyed at judges for being too lenient, they can change the mandatory laws around it. So that's up to them. So no accommodation. So a fortnight before Christmas, officials say they were still uh, struggling to find suitable accommodation because of both the applicant's criminal conviction, because there are rules about how far um, he can live from children, things like that, um, and the enormous pressure that the pandemic has placed on the Home Office managed accommodation system. On the 29th of January, a High Court judge ordered the Home Secretary to act because Mohammed was still sleeping rough and support workers, workers say he was at risk at killing himself or contracting coronavirus. And I know a lot of people are thinking, my heart bleeds, let me play the smallest smart violin in the world. But these are the rules of the system. You can get mad at the courts for it, but the courts did not set up these rules. It was the government, maybe not this government, maybe not the Conservative government, but it was a government nonetheless, and these are the rules in play. After five days, still nothing has changed. That lack of action triggered a new court order from a second senior judge demanding the Home Secretary explain what was going on, and it looked like the Home, the, you know, the home Office went on a case of Bravo 6 going dark because they did not explain what was going on. A senior government lawyer then confirmed there had been a failure to comply, so this is the government failing to comply with a court order. And you can argue that in this case, you know, who cares because this was a pedophile, but these are the rules. If the government fails to act on something that's legally um, binding, then the government can be taken to court over these things. Um, the delay in providing accommodation to the claimant was due to difficulties the Home Secretary has faced with compliance in the light of the current demand on the asylum support system. And again, if the government wanted to resolve some of these issues, they would increase the amount of you know, um, asylum centres that we have and facilities in order to help people. That's on the government. Once again, they could make these things happen, but they choose not to. 
Um, I accept that the Home Secretary should have made the appropriate application to the court for an extension of time once it became clear that she could not comply with the previous order. So what you can see is his, the lawyer of you know the, the Home Office saying that you know we are at fault here. You know, we should have asked for an extension, similar to how I was at university. Always asking for extensions. Uh, immigration officials then proposed putting Mohammed in a London hotel. That plan required an unrealistic late night round trip by taxi from Manchester at their expense. As a result, he slept on the streets again. Officials have now told the court that suitable accommodation has been found in the northwest of England. Um, you know, good luck, uh, northwest of England, you know, having to deal with this guy. But at the same time, you know, had they asked for an extension, this wouldn't be a story. But Justice Chamberlain, the second of the two judges to intervene in the case, said the Home Secretary must now provide a full account of what happened and the court would consider whether the failure should lead to a finding of a contempt of court. And so what this judge is saying is, we want to know exactly why you could not fulfill your responsibility and we want to know exactly why um, you did not ask for an extension and these things, you know, what happened here. That's what we want to know. And to be fair, I'd be interested in, in knowing as well why the Home Office took so long. I think the obvious answer is because of this guy's convictions it's very hard to find him accommodation but this is the role of the home office to deal with these sorts of problems if the home office wants to change the law they should push for the prime minister to change the law um if the evidence um provide sufficient reassurance that the breach was not intentional and that measures have not been put in place to avoid any reoccurrence further proceedings may be unnecessary so solve this problem keep it solved and we're done if not we may have issues um that's what the judge is saying here um, the Home Secretary has until 4pm 22nd of February to respond. The BBC has contacted the Home Office and Mohammed's lawyers for comment. And so I know this one, people thinking, you know, why isn't this guy deported? I'm thinking that as well. I spoke to my brother about the story and I think both of us agree this guy should be deported. He's dangerous. He's going to uh, back to Iran, which is a country which he may probably won't face prosecution or persecution, sorry. Um, so I don't... I don't know, but the rules of the of the you know the rules of the country are that if you're not being deported, um, they have to find you accommodation, and the government failed to do that. I'm not team either of these people, but I do have a lot of sympathy for Pretty Patel in this case because it is not easy to find such a person accommodation, and it will cause uproar in the local area once they find out who this person is, um, and therefore he may have to be moved again. So who knows at this point, because he will have to um, declare himself uh, a sex offender when he's looking for things like employment, etc. If he can find employment, um, who knows, because he's a foreign national, he might not be able to. So I don't understand why this man hasn't been put on a plane to Iran at this point. Um, and so these are the rules, you know, people can get mad and say, we have loads of homeless people here, why aren't we helping them? Um, you know, and the obvious point is that the rules of the country are if you're... Um, if you have left jail and not being deported, it's clear that the government have to offer you housing if you're homeless. So it says here, you know, again, we'll go over this. Foreign national offenders jailed for more than 12 months typically face deportation, but Mohammed was bailed from immigration detention. I don't understand what that means or why. Last October, he asked the Home Office for basic emergency housing under a law for destitute people whose claims to stay in the UK have been rejected, but who are not likely to be removed from the country. So it's therefore people who have their appeal to stay in the country rejected but may not be deported so they're in limbo basically because they're not being sent home but they're told they're not allowed to stay here so i don't know what's going to happen to this guy i don't know if they're going to deport him eventually or if he's going to stay in this country permanently and what his situation will be the only thing i know is that this is an ongoing story and that the home office had failed in their duty to house this pedo guy and i know that's a really painful sentence to hear it's painful to say but I think in this case, the government should perhaps change the laws so that people like him have to be deported because this guy is dangerous. He's had um, he's you know committed offence involving one child. Um, we don't know if he's going to do it again. We don't know if they're keeping an eye on him. The police forces are already stretched. So why this guy is still here, I don't know. Why the Home Office have, um, you know, why the government haven't changed the rules, I don't know. Um, all I know is this is the situation right now. And so this guy has to be housed um, because of the law and that uh, Priti Patel may be in trouble if she doesn't house him. And you can't get mad at the courts for that because the courts are there to enforce the laws that the government creates. So this is, again, down to uh, the government. So anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.